now we get to this point where she brings in these people. She's supposed to bring in these new people, but rather than bring them in, she starts creating this bomb with them. And she's like, well, maybe I'll go create my own faction. Like, I think as a leader, you have the right to feel betrayed and hurt by it. But I do think that she reacted kind of hostile to the whole situation. I think, yeah, it was overly aggressive, but I understand both sides. I think you could look at it as Mayu being the good guy, but you could also look at it as Mayu being the bad guy in the sense that... Yo, what is going on, guys? It's your boy Tyler Mask, a.k.a. Tyler Quinn Williams, a.k.a. Tyler Suplex, a.k.a. The One Who Lived. And welcome back, guys, to another video. We are here talking about some world wrestling wing stardom or world wonder ring stardom one of the two things wwr stardom uh one of my favorite promotions going on right now uh joshi wrestling if you're a fan of it this is where it's at um we are going up on their 10th anniversary they first started their company back in january 2011 it is now january 2021 pretty pretty crazy to think about that it's actually about to be the 10 year anniversary of cm punk's um match with john cena that's even real crazy to think about but this is one of their biggest shows of the year. Now, though their bigger show is their All-Stars Dream Cinderella show happening in March, which is part of their 10th anniversary tour, this is technically supposed to be the 10th anniversary show. So we usually do these like every year with Stardom. They have their big January show. It's not quite Wrestle Kingdom. I would even say it's maybe their Dominion. I would say the Wrestle Kingdom is usually at the end of the year. Their um, year-end climax or whatever. Last year it was their... Um, Osaka Dream Cinderella shit. I was main evented by Mayu Watani, not Mayu Watani, um, Mo Watanabe and uh, Yutami Hayashishida. So, this time around, we got the Year and Climax show, and Yutami is in the main event once again, but she's facing somebody else. I'll be talking about it here, and I'm not alone. I heard my good friend Dane, who also loves Stardom. No, what? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you mean what? You like Stardom? What? Oh, I'd say you love Joshi Rushing, I think, more than I do. Watching all the fucking promotions like TJPW and goddamn... What's it called? You can't Chaka prove that. Bro. Yeah, gotta move and shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But we are here. We're going to be doing previews and predictions for this 10th anniversary show. Listen, we got about, about, like, what, six, seven matches on this card? I think I'm looking forward to most of them. So without further ado, let's get straight into this card. So... The first match on this card we have is for the Future of Stardom Championship. We have the reigning defending champion, Saya Ida, going up against Cosmic Angel's very own Yunagi Sayaka. So, I don't know much about Yunagi. I've only seen her like two times, and both of them were in those six woman tag matches with the Cosmic Angels, Tam Nakano, and Mina Shirakawa. I would say of the three, she's my least favorite. I've been least impressed by her. So in this singles match against Saya Ida, I'm looking for her to actually do something and see if what she's all about. I don't want to say it's more or less because she's tagged in less than the other two are. She's just, I don't know. I haven't been, I haven't really been captivated. She hasn't by stood she out. Yet. Yeah, there you go. She hasn't stood out yet. So I like to think in this match, she might do something. Uh, last time we seen Saida in a championship match, she was against Micah, and I thought they had a good match. So hopefully we get a good match here. I'm going to go with Saida to retain. I know Unagi is currently the artist of Stardom Champions with, obviously, Tam and Mina. She doesn't really need another title, and Saida, she's to hold on to that for just a little while longer. So I'm going to go with Saida to win this match. How about you, Dane? What do you think? Saida has a, a new finisher, right? Or, like, a new move that she's been doing? Uh, I believe she does, yeah. Yeah, I, I forget who it was, but she's, I think she was saying that it was, like, her idol... Not idol, but like her, like one of the people that inspired her in wrestling does it. I forget what exact move it is. I think it's some sort of like variant of a suplex. Don't quote me on that. But uh, if that's what they're doing and they're trying to get this move over, and uh, she's, I mean, she just won the title recently, so I don't, I don't see her dropping it. But hopefully, we can get a good match out of it. I, I'm going with uh, Saida too. Yeah, Saida, Saida, let's go. All right, so that from there, we headed to our next match for the High Speed Championship. Me and Dan are both excited about, about this one for our own separate reasons. Uh, we have the Tokyo Pimp herself, Mama Wrestling, Azumi, defending the High Speed Championship against uh, one Goku Jin Death or Death Yamasan. But here, she is going as her main persona or herself, Kaori Yoniyama. I believe I said that correctly, right, Dane? I think it's, uh, I think it's pronounced... Uh... Uh, Kari 
Yoniyama. Oh, Kari Yoniyama. All right, well, you know her. Now, Bane, you you love yourself some Goku Jin Death for Death Yama-san. You were really excited when I showed you that she's going to be wrestling guys yeah. in here. Like, why yeah. are you so excited about that? I feel like she shines more when she's outside of that box. I think she has a lot of energy, and you see a lot of that in, like, Gotta Move and other promotions, even her own. I think she has a promotion called uh, YMZ Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I think that just outside of these characters, I think sometimes these characters uh, limit her, and she starts just, like, taunting and becoming more of, like, just... She, she doesn't show that energy that she shows in other matches where it seems like... Like, yeah, she wrestles the same, like, style and everything, but I feel like it's a different, um, it's like watching a different person. Like, there's still, like, just a, there, there's something different about her presence when day, she's herself. Say, what? Would you say it's, like, night and day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, one of those things where you feel like she spends more time taunting as these characters instead of wrestling, whereas the other, other times she feels like she's, um, adapting very well and, I think people that just watch Stardom don't realize how good of a wrestler that she actually is and how much energy she actually has and how much she could just entertain, even in just, like, matches, like, in Oz Academy. Or is that what it's called, Oz Academy? I think yeah. it's Oz Academy. Yeah, like, she, she, has, she has matches there where it's, like, she just has a big presence, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're going to see that, and I hope we see that, and I think... Azumi is like a really good opponent uh, to bring that out. Great. I don't. And you know they had a. I think they had a match. Was it at Osaka Dream Cinderella? They had that match when she was Goku Jean Death, and it was okay. Like I know Azumi's latest match was against that May girl, and I thought that was like one of my favorite matches in the entire oh, that card. Was, that, was that, was, that, really, was, that was that really was really good. good. And if we get even just a slither, of what you're saying about what Yamasan can do as just herself without being shackled by gimmicks. This should be really good, and I don't think she's going to win. I think Azumi's retaining here, but I'm excited yeah, for this I match. Yeah, I still think she's. I still think she's mostly about like entertainment, but it's like I feel like it's just something else. You, know, I think if she puts all of her energy into this match, she wrestles multiple different uh, promotions. I won't even go into like. Um, I, I would say, like, she's a workhorse of Japan. Honestly, it throughout like COVID, she's wrestled like. In, like, I swear, like, five different promotions See, at now, a time. See, now, they would know this and more than so me. I, I only know her as Death Yama-san, and her gimmick is Goku Jean Death. I have not seen her outside of Stardom before. Yeah, so you'll, 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 see her pop up in, you'll see her pop up in, like, things like, like I'm pretty sure she wrestles in, like, Wave, Oz Academy, um, Gato Moves, uh, Stardom, but just, just anywhere that will book her, she pops up and she, she'll do these, like, matches and it's just it's just crazy how much it's almost like she doesn't give herself a break she always wants to wrestle she always wants to entertain she always wants to be in the ring and whether she's um whatever gimmick or whatever she's working with i feel like she just puts everything into it and it, she's just a workhorse it's, it's like john cena working how many matches he did for wwe a year it's just so impressive yeah and i think I don't think she's gonna win because I think her like her role in stardom is pretty much obvious. She's she's the old veteran that's there to. She's the uh, sort of, like the new Japan dad. She's the stardom mom. Yeah, yeah, she's like the the mom of the promotion, yeah. and I I think she can, um, help make others thrive through her experience and her drive, and just I don't know. I just really like her. I, I'm a big fan of her. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, Azumi's gonna win. Yeah, Azumi obviously. takes the cake there. So, we're <laughs> two and two so far. Uh, next match, I'm actually kind of excited for now that I'm reading it out loud. We have Natsu Poi of Donald Damundo versus Konami of Oedotai. I'm actually excited for this match because I was really impressed by Natsu Poi in the last show we watched together, which was the All Dream, um, not All Dream, uh, Osaka Dream Cinderella show, where she was in a tag match with Hameka. I think it was against Konami and, uh, B Priestley, wasn't it? And Natsu Poi, I really impressed me in that match. And, you know, Konami, she's a great talent. Even though she never wins any titles, she's really great. And oh, yeah, um, she, she... I think if we can get that high-speed action that we saw from Natsu Poi and maybe see if she could do some technical, at, like, athletic stuff against Konami, who we know is can be high-speed, but more so trying to break your limbs and kick the shit out of you. 
if we could get any of that from these two women, this could be like a potential sleeper of the night. So I'm excited for this match. I'm reading it out loud. I'm gonna go Konami to win though. Yeah, you know what? Never mind. Diana Dunmundo never loses. So Natsu Poi wins this. All match. right, all right. Now, so we're on the same page. For a second, I thought we were gonna get a different yeah, answer. Exactly. <laughs> I, I forgot I, she I was, was in Donald Mundo for a second. Yeah, I was. I'm going with her too. Um, not just because she's in um, Donna Del Mondo or whatever, but like also, like you said, she's very impressive, and I think she's someone that needs the win more. I I think she just needs to establish herself and Boy. show that she can. Listen, fit in with the other things because yeah all the other members of donna del mondo have kind of like settled into their roles in the roster and kind of like you know sometimes overly mm -hmm. just defeated people for no reason but i feel like she is still coming into her own and i feel like a lot of people that um uh because she's she did wrestle in stardom before but she she's coming back so I feel like there's a lot of newer fans who just don't know who she is because we we didn't even know that she was there beforehand. Um, so she's been I feel for like five years. Yeah, and I feel like she needs to. She just needs to reestablish that role in stardom and show that like she's there to stay and that she's gonna fit in with these and maybe give us like ideas for dream matches as we see her style progress and as we come to understand her style better. As stardom fans and then maybe we could start doing the dream match it's like oh dude she'd be great against this person that dude, person this person that person. her versus Ozzy would kick so much ass oh that yeah would kick so much I, I think so too but yeah i i want her to win and i i want her to kind of like cement that role and show that she belongs in her faction because i feel like everybody else is kind of proven themselves and they're all ahead of her and i feel like she She's one of the ones that is catching up. Yeah, now she is one of the newest acquisitions too. I think her makeup yeah. did come in before her, so she does have a lot to prove in here. I think beating Konami would definitely be a big one for her, like you said. So yeah, not too yeah, it's called Konami. catching up. Yeah, I, I that's what I said. Yeah. The next match in here, now that Rena, like this is actually a really stacked card. Now that I see this, looking at it, uh, the next match in here is going to be really good as well. We have Tom Nakano representing Cosmic Angels versus Starlight Kid representing Stars. Now this is a very important match. Seeing as at Osaka Dream Cinderella, that is a show where Tom Nakano broke apart from stars and created her own faction, the Cosmic Angels. Now, on that show, that's where Mayu and SLK really show their, you know, how betrayed and hurt they were towards Tom Nakano. But they were showing more heelish, a heelish side. Now, they didn't turn heels. I don't perceive them as heels. And I don't think that's how they're supposed to be portrayed. But... From how they came off, they came off as the ones that can be looked at as the bad guys in the situation. I feel like you could, I feel like you could look at it both ways. You, you could definitely see it both ways. I think if you're somebody who, you know, is all about teamwork and you see... Because it's like... Okay, think about it this way. Tan Nakano was a part of Stars for a very long time. And you could say she's a very loyal member. She never really betrayed the faction. She never left the faction. But... Now we get to this point where she brings in these people. She's supposed to bring in these new people. But rather than bring them in, she starts creating this bomb with them. And she's like, well, maybe I'll go create my own faction. Like, I think as a leader, you have the right to feel betrayed and hurt by it. But I do think that she reacted kind of hostile to the whole situation. I think, yeah, it was overly aggressive. But I understand both sides. I think... You could look at it as Mayu being the good guy, but you could also look at it as Mayu being the bad guy in the sense that it seemed like she kind of moved on from Tam, even though Tam was this loyal person. She was teaming up with everybody else, but like Tam Mayu and she really kind of... moved on just yet. It didn't, didn't seem like she moved on. It seemed like she's pretty hurt by it. And we'll see in this no, match... No, 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 no. She, no, she, moved, on from, she moved on from tagging with her. She oh, was yeah, you're right. kind of, I guess, like... What do you? What do you, it's like the saying you don't you don't always know what you have until it's gone. Yeah. I feel like she um, took. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you say that. Like she basically was like, oh well, she's always there, so she don't really matter. And then the moment she Absolutely, moves on, it's yeah. her, her own faction. She's like, what the hell did you just do? I, I think you could also see mad. it as maybe she thinks that she feels that Tam is better than her because it's like, yeah, you were always on my side, and now all of a sudden you get these partners, and you think you could just move on and be your own faction. Yeah, you like, think you're better. Yeah, than you think you're better yeah. than me. So 
I think there's a lot of ways you can perceive Mayu. Uh, Tam, you could also perceive her as like, oh, I don't think there's a really way to perceive Tam as the bad guy here. I mean, she didn't leave on bad terms at all. Like, she just said, hey, I guess I'm leaving. You can like, see I don't as, really see how I you can see, can see Tam see as the bad guy. I, can, I think you can see it as disloyal and um, just somebody that kind of, I don't know. It, se it seems like she... You could, I think, from my perspective, she's somebody that's like, I'm hot shit. I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm too big for stars now. I'm gonna go start my own thing. And even though she didn't say it like that, I think you could, as the leader, you perceive it that way. Like, oh, you're, you're, oh, you're, you're, you're hot shit now. You're the leader now of your own faction. You think you're, you can lead better than me, and you. Yeah. You you wish you you wish you you were the leader of stars. Now we're and not now getting Tam star. versus Mayu. I think we're probably getting that in March. However, we are getting Starlight yeah. Kid versus Tam. Now Starlight Kid, I felt like just followed Pac mentality and followed the leader exactly. in the whole thing. So this is going to be very interesting. I do believe to advance the story, it should be Tam winning. Um, if Starlight Kid wins, I won't be mad. I think I'll have to be very surprised if she beats Tam here. But I'm going to go with Tam. I think I think Tam's gonna win too, but I I wouldn't same thing. I wouldn't be mad if Starlight Kid won. Uh, Starlight Kid's um, still very like young, so I think the like Pac mentality thing makes a lot of sense. Like you said, I don't know if she's really like as angry as everybody else is. I feel like she kind of just fell into that. Well, everybody else is angry. Um, I'm loyal to my faction. I'm I'm just I'm just gonna be loyal to them, and I'm gonna do what they do. <laughs> exactly. How if your one friend is you know getting beat up, then you're gonna join in. It's like well, yeah, I kind of have to. You're so. like you're like I don't really hate that dude, but he's beating up my friends, so I guess I hate him now. Yeah, exactly. I mean. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand it. But I think Tam wins. So next we got the elimination tag. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, these next two matches I could do or do or do or die with, do without. Uh, we have elimination tag in here. We have Mayu Watani and Ruka versus B Priestley and Saki Kashima, the current wonder of stardom. Not wonder of stardom. What am I talking about? The um, uh, why did I just forget the name of it? Uh, the not the artist, not the artist. The uh, goddesses of stardom tag team champions versus Siori and Himeka versus Momo Watanabe and Sayaka Um, it's it's interesting because you have the you have the team of mayu and ruka but you know damn well they're not winning it because ruka's there uh but then you have b and saki they're obviously the new champion so they winning would make a lot of sense but then you also have siori and himeka which i don't think they really team up all that often uh so that's different and siori she's the uh swa world championship I mean, she was just I think in it makes sense hold on i think it makes sense that siori's in this match because she's been having like kind of battles with momo even like very friendly battles but like still they've been like kind of having like this little like casual feud mm -hmm. so it makes sense that she's kind of like and i don't know i don't know who's gonna win this and then um, you have uh, momo and saya and you have saya yeah. who just recently lost the goddesses of stardom tag team championships who was teaming with you tommy she was hot for a minute everybody was talking about her and shit yeah, i'm still i still think saya kamatani is like one of the best wrestlers in stardom i mean i she won my rookie of the year so I mean, most improved of the year for 2020 so i'm still high on saya and momo, oh i agree momo but been, i'm i'm just saying she been she been she been slipping so you I hate think you hate I don't hate my I don't hate Momo. I don't hate her at all. I think she's been slipping a lot. And... Oh, you changed it. You're like I do hate my you. I just don't hate. My... <laughs> <laughs> don't do that to me. But uh, no, uh, with Momo and Saya teaming up, I think that could be a new team, like a new dynamic there. Yeah. But Donald Demundo never loses, so I'm gonna go with Ciori and make it win this match. I'm a I'm a go. Uh... I'm going go Momo and Saya. I'm really tempted thinking. to go Momo and Saya, but I'm going to go Siori and Himeka. Yeah, I mean, it's the safe bet, but, you know, I'm I'm not going safe. I'm going I'm going who I want to win. Ah, it, it, it's who you want to win versus who you think will win. Well, who you want to win versus who you think will win, yeah. I, I'm going with who I think will win. Who I want to win is Momo and Saya. But. Then we get into the Komen event, the Wonder of Stardom Championship, a no-rules match, no holds bar. The reigning defending champion Julia going up against Natsuko Tora. I don't believe Natsuko Tora has ever been the Wonder of Stardom champion. I know she's definitely fought for the championship before, 
But you have these two heal factions going up against each other, so that's always really interesting in my part to see how they do heal versus heal matches. Julia, she's been the champion, I believe, since September. Uh, so I don't wouldn't say she's overdue for a loss at all. But I don't believe Natsuka Tora is winning it. It doesn't really feel like it's been built up properly for Natsuka Tora to win the championship. I know B and B and um Saki just won the goddesses championships but i don't know if that really is going to be the picture image of oh what will tie is going to hold I think on honestly i i think honestly if any titles changing on this card i think that this is the title that should you think change so? should or will yeah uh, i don't think it will nah. but i think it should yeah all right i mean like i said i don't think i'd be mad if natsuka Tora wins this match i'm not the biggest natsuka Tora fan but you know anybody being julia are me I don't hate Julia either, but you know she loses. She wins so much that sometimes I just want to see her lose. Sometimes you know, but yeah, I don't think tonight's the night. I'm going to go with Julia to retain the Wonder of Stardom Championship. I'm going Julia as well, but I think Tora is a really good wrestler. Like I think she she doesn't really fit the mold of what like a Stardom wrestler usually is. I feel like she's very like power oriented, and I don't know if well, we she's, see. She's like jungle. Well, I mean, jungle's not, yeah, we, you know. Yeah, but we don't see a lot of power. Like, I guess you, you're right. Jungle would kind of fit that category. But I feel like jungle fits in more with everybody else, whereas Tora kind of just doesn't. She fe she feels like a different beast entirely. Yeah, she seems like right. she would fit in in, like, a different, like, era. Or, like, maybe even a different promotion. Maybe something like Oz Academy would be, like, something she'd fit in with, like... Because, you know, in that promotion they like hit people with like um chains and shit yeah. they do that shit that she does mm -hmm. and they do a lot of that shit like that shit's really like aggressive sometimes where it's like i feel like her way of wrestling would fit in better in like a more aggressive like more like hardcore like n like like a, a no rules match yeah. specifically like a like a no rules match but that's not like a regular everyday stardom thing exactly that's why it's special but it's like i don't see her winning the title because like she, she doesn't fit the mold of what like stardom's about I, I like i think julia has that down and she fits in perfectly with all these people and i feel like they're people just not ready for tour to win <laughs> they're not ready that type. they're not they're not it's they just can't like handle it. <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> They can't handle it. It would be like it would be like one of the craziest It'd be like fucking if Momo things. I a red strap, right? <laughs> Yo, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, let me but, stop. No, I do think I I think Julie's gonna win. But like, I don't know. I feel like 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 I said, if any belt should change, it should be this one because like everybody else is kind of like a fresh champion, and like I don't think we need a new refreshing champion for any of these others but i feel like that one we could use that we could see what is next in store for julia but it's like they're not gonna do that they're not nah, gonna do that gonna it's do like that. i don't know who beats julia for it honestly but it's not not Tora. that's all i know but then but then if we do that then none of the titles are gonna fucking change on the i mean I don't expect them to, but we'll get into that. I'll talk about that when we get into the next match. The main event of the evening, the World of Stardom Championship is on the line as the reigning and defending Tammy, Yutami Hayashishida, defends her championship against Micah. Now, this match right here, I feel like is probably going to be one of the show stealers. Because Micah, she's oh. really been, she's really been like improving a lot and i don't think michael is ever bad i just never really saw michael as like good but like lately i've been seeing michael really doing in stuff so if anybody from ddm deserved the championship match of this magnitude i think it's definitely micah now going in this match against yeah. tommy who's going into i believe her second defense e I, you know i've been saying donald the mundo they never lose this is the one time i think donald the mundo probably loses this match I'm going to go with you, Tommy. I don't think Micah is due for I know Micah was just a future stardom champion. I don't know if you can go from future stardom champion to being the world of stardom champion. I guess you could. I mean, I you, could, you could, but it, I don't see it being Micah. Like, if anybody from DDM is going to be the world stardom champion, 
it's going to be Julia. Now, I don't think it's going to happen until she loses the rights draft. But Micah doesn't... Now, at the same time, a lot of people thought Momo would be the first one to be the champion of, of Queen's Quest, and it was Utami. So who's to say the first person to be the World Storm Champion would be Micah instead of Julia? You know what I mean? At the same time, Micah did defeat Utami Hayashida in the Five Star Grand Prix, so there's also that story going on between these two. Ooh. It, she's due back for a win. I don't see um I don't see Micah as the world of stardom champion. I I don't. I, I feel like Micah's one of those, you know, challenges you start in you insert in there to give you Tommy some wins. I just I disagree in the sense that I could see her winning it in the future. I just think it's too well, yeah, early. Yeah, in the future, not now. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's like, oh, I just couldn't see her as the champion. No, I, I, I easily could see her as the champion. I just can't see her as the champion right now two years from now a year from now even maybe who knows that that answer might be different yeah but right now i don't see why if you're trying to establish like a new ace and i don't know if that's what they're doing uh we, we i can't read their fucking mind obviously yeah, no. but if they're trying to establish a new ace i feel like the best way would be to give you tommy this great run that people would be like oh yeah she's the poster girl or her and Julia, and you, you, that's probably what they're going Exactly, for. and it's like, Let's she see. already beat Momo in her first defense, which eh, a lot of people really were tied on that one, like, oh, well, Momo defeated her in the first defense, and she beat her. She beat the leader, so, obviously, right now, Yutami's propositioned as the ace and the leader of Queen's Quest. I think it would be kind of premature to just have her lose right now. So I don't see you know, why Micah would win this match. I think if it were anybody in this match, you could put Mayu back in this match as a rematch, and I would still go with you, Tommy, to win this yeah, match. Like it'd be like trying to get Brock Lesnar over, and then Brock Lesnar wins the WWE title, and in his first time winning it, he loses it the first like night he defends it. Like it, would you think Brock Lesnar is this big beast still? Not Probably really not. Enough. Yeah, it, it just wouldn't make sense logically. But who knows? Who knows? Maybe they're gonna surprise us. Maybe it's uh. It's a swerve, bro. Maybe Vince Russo's booking. Listen, Stardom Star isn't one to bounce around the World Championship. I'm still shocked that they put it on you, Tommy. But I don't. I don't think so. I don't think it's happening. I don't yeah, think it's I don't think so either. So that's our predictions. I think we got. I think we were. We guessed the same ones except for the elimination tag. So we'll see when we watch the show. The show is going yeah. to be happening tomorrow, of course. But I'm not watching. We can't watch it live, but we'll be watching it a week out from now. And a week out from now, we'll give you guys our review. What we thought about the show. So tune back here for that review. It might be on the Tyler Williams channel. Just stay tuned. I'll let you guys know. But thank you all for tuning in for this extended. I think this is going on almost 30 minutes, but I had a very good time talking today about this. Thank y'all for tuning in stay hyped. to this review, this preview of stardom's 10th anniversary what did you guys think comment down below let your boy know i love you guys always and i will catch you all later peace out guys but hey don't go anywhere i still have one thing left to say before i send you on your way so there's this thing that i do on my channel i did it last year and i'm bringing it back this year Call the Tyler Quinn Williams Royal Rumble Pool, where I put you all in one pool and give you a number between 1 and 30. And if your number wins either the men's or women's Royal Rumble, then you win. And you can win a grand prize between either six months paid subscription to any wrestling service, whether it be WWE Network, whether it be New Japan World, whether it be Stardom World, or Independent Wrestling TV, or you could win two free pro wrestling t-shirts to any pro wrestling shop all you have to do to enter in this pool completely 100 percent free by the way go to my channel go to the tyler Quinn williams channel right below click on it go to the community tab and right where you see that royal rumble pool thread go to the comment section and type the word rumble press enter once your comment is started by me you are officially entered in the pool hurry now we still have five more spets left in pool number one before we have to open up pool number two Patreon backers, if you are on patreon.com slash Tyler Mask and you are a $10 or more tier, you get two positions in the Royal Rumble match. You get two numbers, one for each pool that you are in. And that's it. I'm going to head up out of here. I hope to see you all in the Rumble pool, and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, go follow me on Twitch, go follow me on Twitter. Talk to you guys later. Peace out, guys.